Hey guys, welcome back to the film room. In this video, we're gonna talk about all of you undersized guards that are looking for ways and opportunities to separate yourself in a game that highly favors height, size, and length. And to do that, we're gonna look at Yuki Kawamura, who is only five foot eight, but is making a huge impact in the preseason right now. There are a few things he's been doing on both ends of the court that if you want to separate yourself and get to the highest level, you've gotta implement these things into your game. We're gonna start on the defensive end with two important things. Number one, you have to be a physical defender that's got a chip on his shoulder, and you also have to be a great help defender who knows how to play in gaps, help off of the basketball, and rotate effectively. Coaches at every level are looking for reliable defenders who they can count on, and if you can be that guy, it's gonna put you in a great position to get on the court. And being physical doesn't just mean fouling a lot. You'll see that Yuki embraces this screen and switches aggressively and is very physical with the bigger guard. And typically as a small guard, you're going to be able to get away with a lot more, so use it to your advantage. And the other thing about being physical is that it sets a tone. On this pick and roll, notice how Yuki goes and he chucks or tags the roller and gets called for a foul, but he's just letting the other team know that he's not backing down from anything and coaches love that. Pay attention to his help side defense on this possession. On this wing drive, the big is forced to rotate over and stop the ball, and now he is responsible for cracking back on the biggest guy on the court, and look at the way he fights with him and doesn't give up an inch. That's the competitive spirit that you have to have. Now when it comes to being an off-ball defender, you can't just stay hugged up to your man. Notice how he's in gaps, he's anticipating that next pass, and when the ball does get kicked out, he makes a great effort to contest the shot, whether he's going to block it or not to impact the shooter. Which leads to our last key and probably the most important one, which is making maximum efforts on every play. As the ball gets thrown into the post and he recognizes the double team, he is going to sprint to try and steal this pass, and when he doesn't get it, he gets back into the play, and now he's on the floor fighting for a loose ball, and instead of staying on the ground, he gets up, fights to box out, and then he's gonna be the first guy out in transition to start their offensive break. And I can guarantee you the reason that he's on this team in the first place is because he has consistently done these things throughout his career, and coaches want guys like that on their team. So make sure you're physical, you're a great help defender, and you give maximum effort. And if you're really trying to go the extra mile, you need to pick up full court on defense. This is something that Yuki's been doing, and it stands out. If you're willing to give everything that you have to turn the ball handler three or four times a possession and still do a great job in the half court, coaches are gonna wanna put you in the game because ultimately they would love to wear out the other team's point guard, but most coaches don't have somebody who has the grit to do this every possession and not become a liability. Now when it comes to the offensive end, the old saying, if you can dish it out, you've gotta be able to take it, well that's the first thing we're gonna talk about. When you're a smaller guard, bigger defenders want to pressure you because they think that they can speed you up or turn you over just because of the size difference. And one of the things that Yuki does really well is he still aggressively attacks the rim, but when he gets cut off, he still finds ways to make plays for his teammates. So he doesn't let the physicality keep him from being aggressive, but he does it under control. Watch as he gets cut off on this right-hand drive, and then when he reverse pivots, he gets his eyes to the middle of the court and has this really nice dime to Zach Eady because he didn't get overwhelmed by the pressure. And this is a great segue to the next point, which is that you have to find a way to get paint touches as a small guard. And if you struggle to do that in an isolation situation, take this tip from Yuki. You need to learn how to drive on the catch. But here's the major key. When you get to the paint, the goal of doing that is to draw help defenders so that you can find open teammates. And the reason I encourage you to do it on the catch is because that's when your defender has to close out and they are the most vulnerable to getting beat off of the dribble. So if you're someone who feels like they can never get past their defender, this is the ultimate equalizer. Now when you do get to the paint, it's very common to just get your eyes fixated on the rim and only think about scoring. But you have to keep in mind that these help defenders are a lot bigger than you, so instead of challenging a shot blocker, a lot of times you're going to find guys who are wide open and make the game really easy for everybody around you. 
Now, if you have a ridiculous layup package like Kyrie or you're bouncy like John ja Morant, that's one thing. But for the majority of small guards, the best thing that you can do is get two feet to the paint and find the open man. And what you'll start to find is this is a really easy way to play basketball. Because as soon as you get to paint and a help defender steps up, somebody on your team has to be open and you just need to find them and allow them to do the difficult part of making the shot. So the three steps to remember when it comes to paint touches is number one, try and drive closeouts because it's when the defense is most vulnerable and it's the easiest to get past them. Try and get a paint touch because it's going to force help defenders and then wherever the help comes from, that's probably an indicator of where the open man is going to be. Now the third key is being effective in ball screens. Because of the way that the game is played, it's a guarantee that you're gonna be in pick and roll situations and you have to be able to read the defense. Now the goal is to get two people on you and then you're gonna to have to be able to read up to three help side defenders. Now because you're a smaller guard, you're gonna to have to make some very crafty and skilled passes to get it to where you need it to go. Notice how Yuki has to jump, do a no look pass and wrap it around the big just to get it to Huff because of the size difference. So pay attention to the details on this sideline out of bounds play. They're gonna run a zoom action where he comes off of a down screen and a handoff. He's going to sprint off of the down screen to get separation from his man and he immediately gets his eyes to the big who is in a flat coverage and he knows that if he throws a pocket pass or a short roll, that big is never gonna be able to get his hands down there and that leads to the dunk. And keep in mind, he's doing all of this while dealing with all of this physicality from his on-ball defender. So when he comes off of this step up, now he sees that the big is in what's called drop coverage or he's sinking, so he knows Huff is gonna be open on the pop. And because his man is recovering from behind, instead of throwing the ball in the air, he's gonna throw this bounce pass back to Huff to make sure that it doesn't get stolen. And he's done this multiple times in the preseason and gotten open shots for his big. So your three keys when it comes to being effective in ball screens is handle the on-ball pressure from your defender, get your eyes to the big and find out where he's at and what coverage he's playing, and then you have to know where the off-ball defenders or your tags are at so that you can make the right read when you're driving. And the last and final key that we haven't talked about that most of you are wondering, is he gonna say anything about scoring? Absolutely. If you're a smaller guard that doesn't have the ability to just be an isolation guy like an Allen Iverson who can go and get a ton of points, the key is being an efficient scorer with the shots that you take. You don't have to shoot it a ton if you have this body of work or a resume of playing great defense, being an energy guy, and making everything around your offense easier. But you still need to be able to knock down an open shot so that the defense isn't able to sag off of you and play five on four defense. So for all my short kings and queens out there, yes, it can be difficult to be an undersized guard, but these tips will help you close the gap. If this video helped you in any way, would you share it? Would you like it? Would you comment on it and subscribe to the channel? Thanks for coming through. We'll see you next time in the film room.